Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to spend some time looking at the new and improved sentiment action in Power Automate and we'll spend some good amount of time over here. First we'll go and take a look at Azure's cognitive services and see the text analytics over there. Then we'll jump over to Power Automate's connector and see that little change which has happened in the connector and then the rest we'll spend the time building a brand new flow focusing on this new sentiment action and I'll show you how to go and leverage that. So stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now, before we jump into the main topic, I do want to spend a few seconds talking about why it is so important for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, because in my YouTube's community where all subscribers have access, they help me decide what I should next focus on. And here, for example, I actually asked them, hey, what do you want me to focus on? Do you want me to focus on the Microsoft's forms administration piece or the Power Automate's new sentiment action? And the majority of the votes were for the Power Automate sentiment action. So you will have a big say in deciding what I should focus on next. So I highly, highly recommend you subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, good. All right, now let's focus on the fun part. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the actual Azure section. So I'm gonna jump in now to my Azure Cognitive Services. So let me go into my uh, Cognitive Services, and here it is, I've logged into my Cognitive Services, and then you can actually come up over here and just search for Cognitive Services, and that's what I'm doing. Now in my case, I've already gone and set things, set things up, so I'm gonna come into my Cognitive Services, and I can go into my basically overall services that I've used, and in my case, it is basically the text analytics. The text analytics is our focus because that's what gets us the sentiment. So when I click on the text analytics, what I have to do is go over to the overview. And these are the two important things that you will need to set up that connector. You will go in and get your endpoint API URL. And that's it. It's a very simple URL. And then you click over here and you will actually get two keys. Just, just pick any one of them. I always pick the one on the top. But those are the two important things that you will need. You get them right over here. Uh, and I'm not gonna focus on the Azure subscription and the services because that's just too much and out of scope, but I'm gonna come over here and specifically say that it is a cognitive services text analytics. That's the, the technical term is the API type. And then here you go and get the endpoint URL and you will go and get the keys. Now, once you do that, now we switch over to Power Automate. Now in Power Automate, you've got connections. You gotta come over to the Power Automate, you go to data, expand that, and you go and set up your connections. Now in my connections, for you, if this is the first time you will click on the new connections, you will click on text, search for text analytics, and this is what you'll get. Now, when you click on that, you can go ahead and name it whatever you want, but the account key, that account key is the same thing as the manage key that we picked up from here. And then the site URL, that's the exact same site URL, which was the endpoint that you picked up. So it's sometimes the naming conventions are different. You know, it was called one thing in the Azure site, it's called something else in Power Automate. You know, the, the uh, endpoint API, which is the uh, endpoint over here in the Azure site, it is called as the site URL. So names are a little off, but they all mean the same thing, all right? So I kind of wanted to show this to you because if this is the first time you're watching and getting interested in sentiment, these are the fundamental and the, and the preliminary things you will have to set up. So now that I've shown you the basics, let's now switch over and talk about the Power Automate. And what was the initial change that happened? So the first thing was, I'll actually show you two examples that I already have. Now here is one of the first ones that I had built long time ago, and I used the sentiment analysis uh, action. And so that's what it was. It says detect sentiment, and there you go. It just had the place where you go and put in the text. You've got the show advanced options. The show advanced options was just for the language, and that was it. That's all there was before. Now it's a little different. First of all, this is version three, 3.0. 3 it's version three. And as you can see, it's a lot different. Um, yeah, you go ahead and put in a text, but you've also got to go ahead and put in a document ID, and then you can go and put in all these other little advanced functions. But as you can see, it's a lot more different from what it was before. And I kind of wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison between the one before, simple, and this one over here. It's a little bit more work involved, but all in a good way. And now let's go and build one from scratch. Okay, so I'm gonna to come to my My Flows and I'm gonna go and click on a new flow and I'll go ahead and do an instant one from the cloud. The reason I'm doing instant is because we are building one and I'm gonna show you as an example, I'm gonna actually use the manual trigger flow. So in the manual trigger flow, I'll select that one and I'll call this as a 
live demo for the sentiment action. We actually say new sentiment action. Okay. And then here, all I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put in input. So I'll select the text and I'll leave that as input and I'll go ahead and leave that as is. So this is all good. And I'm intentionally using this as a um, manual trigger, putting in an input so I can demonstrate that to you. Once you're done, the beauty of this trigger one is you can replace that to wherever else your trigger is from and wherever else the data is coming. Take, for example, Twitter. Your data could come from there. So to do this way when you're first building, all right? Cool. Next, I'm going to go and start building some variables. And the first variable I actually build is the document ID. And in fact, what I'm going to switch this, I'm going to skip this for now because I'm going to show you where I'll use it. So I'm going to now search for that sentiment. And in the sentiment, that's what it is. It's the sentiment 3.0. So when I click on the sentiment 3.0, and in fact, just so that you know, they're both the same thing. I'll get out of that. I'll come back in. I'll click on sentiment. And the sentiment, the text analytics comes up. And the only options I have over there left is, this, is, the, um, is the sentiment 3.0, the same thing that I want, okay? So I go and click on that sentiment 3.0, and this is what it is. So the first thing that it needs is that document ID. I wanna pause over here and give you some examples and some ideas as well. If in your case, you are taking any of the data that you've got, you, know, you, you get some data coming in, you're getting some text, and that text is what you wanna run through sentiment, then that's great because what happens is say I'm getting this data and I'm saving it to a SharePoint list or a SQL table. Each of them have their ID columns. You can take those ID columns and put them over here on the document ID and that will take care of filling it on that section. So that'll take a big improvement and a big step forward. But what happens is in your scenario, if you don't have that, you don't have an ID column, then you want to set up a variable, specifically an integer type variable, and then put that information over here. Because what's happened is I've tried putting in just one or single quotes, one, close the quotes, or double quotes, one, close the quotes, some, some integer, and it just hasn't worked. Putting it in a variable, an integer type variable, and then dropping the variable over here, that was more successful. But that was a workaround. In your case, if you are actually taking this for a production, and if you're putting it in the data, get that data's ID number and put it over here. And that actually works. And the two examples I gave was either a SharePoint list items ID or the SQL tables, whatever PRI in a primary ID that you create, okay? So just thought I'll share that information with you. So now in our sense, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a variable. So I'm gonna call this as a variable. I'm going to now initialize a variable and this will be an integer type variable. And I'll call this as a variable for doc ID. And I'll also initialize the name and I'll call that as initializing the uh, bar doc ID. Awesome. And for here, I'll just put that in as one, number one, and we are good. So now I can go ahead and now take that information and I'll dump it over here. So in that bar ID, I went and put that. And then next thing I'll do is I'll come in now to the documents text and the documents text will go ahead and grab the input. This input is the exact same as the input that we got over there. And honestly, we are actually done to do into our first testing. This is literally that simple. So I'll go and save it. Great, it says all great. I'll just go and take a look at the flow checker. Zero errors, zero warnings. We are in good shape. Let's go do a test really fast. So now I'll go and do a text, uh, test. I'll say I'm gonna manually put some data over there uh, and that is it. So first process, which happens always the first time for a flow is it'll go and go through the signing process. All that is good. And now I'm going to say is that sentiment analytics is awesome, all right? And I'll run that. So now it's gone ahead and running it. It says everything is good. It also told me your flow ran successfully. Woohoo, it was awesome. And just let's go expand each of them. This was basically just all the information, the schema. Our input was the important one. Sentiment analytics is awesome. Went ahead and grabbed that number, which was great. Go ahead and put that number in. And this is how all that information comes in. One of the first things I like to see is that I got no errors, so I'm in great shape. But the first thing is I look at it and it's kind of you know important that we kind of go through the step by step because I'll be focusing a lot on how the breakdown is. So the first part is the ID number was one, which was the default that we put in, but the overall sentiment and the overall confidence, that is what shows up first. Now I'll give you some more examples to emphasize why, but let's just take a look at the overall. 
The overall is positive, which is great because the overall, I basically just, you know, it said the sentiment analytics is positive, is, is awesome. So even if you just hear it as a human being, you understand that, yeah, this is pretty positive because it's saying sentiment analytics is awesome. Great. So it, the sentiment analytics, just the AI system in the back end, the cognitive services AI is also coming back and saying that, hey, this is a positive statement. And it said that the overall positive is one, which means there's zero neutral, there's zero negative, it is all good. But then after that, it breaks it down per sentence. Now, how does the per sentence work? That's the next demo that I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to come here right now. We'll go get out. We'll go do run another uh, do another run, and let's now go ahead and put some example in. So we'll actually talk about to subscribe. All right. So I'm now going. I've put in a good amount of text, and I'm going to do run flow, and it's done. So it's actually going ahead and saying it's done. It's running. I'll click on it. And now it is going in and it's going and probably will still be running and any second it will finish. And now we'll take a deeper look at how that sentiment actually does a breakdown. It's successful. And again, the trigger was a simple thing. It's the text that we added, took all of the text, the variable ID, that's the default one that we put in. But now let's take a look at this. So this is pretty neat. The overall, overall sentiment again is positive because that's what it picked up over here. See the overall is positive. And it said that this is positive. Positive one means this is 100% positive. It sometimes can come back and say this is a 0.8 and 0.9, and then the remaining ones get broken down over here in the neutral and in the negative. Um, but now let's actually take a look at how each of the sentences are broken down. See, now you can kind of understand that, yeah, in the, in the overall sentences, it is different. Like it's saying that the next part of the sentence is at a 0.87. So what does that mean? So let's take a look at that. So now when I go and do a scrolling down, this is don't forget to join the R&D show. And it had the period. So the period in this case is what went ahead and actually broke it down into three different sentences. And now you'll understand how that's worked. Now I've also seen different situations. I have any of the, um, uh, you know, any of the pipelines that you put in, those are taking care of a sentence. Sometimes exclamation marks also work. So it's, it's not just the period that breaks it down into different sentences. There are all these other characters that come into play. So in this sentence now, it tell me what is the length. I mean, it's grabbing a lot of great information. So I'm pretty excited and very impressed with how much the cognitive services is helping. So it grabbed the entire length, 35 characters, which is great. This specific sentence is a don't forget to join the R&D show. It is saying that it has 0.06% um, of uh, positiveness and 87% uh, is at um, neutral, which makes perfect sense, right? Because there's not a big positive side to this. But let's go and jump into the next section. The next section is positive and it says 100% positive. And for that, it says, this is a down to earth and uh, two awesome MVPs with real world scenarios. So just as a human being between you and us reading it, this is definitely positive, but sentiment went and picked that up. But what's more important is now this was the second sentence. And then finally, you have the third sentence. And in the third sentence, it came back with again, a 0.9% positive. And that was this one. So don't forget to subscribe. So sentiment is actually pretty smart. It is actually telling you that overall, it is very positive. And overall positive was right at the top. It said that overall, this is very positive. It's going in and picking the whole thing as positive one. Uh, but it's also giving you a breakdown. And, and this is the big change which has happened before, where it was just a sentiment against this one with the version 3.0. This is the big change because it's now it's giving you full detail breakdown at each and every sentence level. It's giving a full breakdown of, okay, overall is positive, which is great, but I want to tell you how much details, how much positive it is. And the breakdown by sentence is very important. So what I want to do is I want to use this information and build a really smart flow to grab all of this and we'll go and now build the next steps for that. All right. So now that you've seen how this works, let's go and start putting in a little bit more of variables that I need to actually make this really more robust. So what I'm going to do is the first one, I'm going to add another action and the next action, I'm going to go and initialize something. I'm going to initialize a variable and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to call this as a initial, I'm going to call it as bar sentiment. And this is going to be an array type. What this one is going to do is it's going to break down and give me the values of each and every of that sentiment scores that we're getting. So that's what I'm going to grab over here. And I'll just go ahead and make sure that I just rename this one to initialize bar sentiment. Cool. Then let me just go and drop two more variables because I want to show you some examples over there. 
So the next one is going to be for the initialize variable. It's going to be, I'm going to initialize the variable and I'm going to call this as a bar confidence. This will be of type string and I'll go and get the name. I'm going to rename this and I'll call that as bar confidence. And then finally, I'll go and grab another one, which is the bar confidence score. I'll go call it as variable, grab that one, go ahead and initialize another variable. This one is going to be of a type float because it's going to give me that percentage value. Percentage value can have se several more units after the dot digit. So I just want to keep make sure I have the correct uh, uh, integer type and that's going to be the floating one. So this is going to be confidence score. Remember the one on the top is just confidence. This one is confidence score. And so I'll go ahead and now give that name over here as well. Var confidence score. Let me just go save that. Now we've got all these informations that we need. Next step is already completed. So we're going to completely skip on that. Then after this, I'm going to now show you an example of just how I can go in and just get that score. I want to get the overall score and I want to make sure that I'm grabbing the plus positive, negative and things like that. So here I'm going to teach you how to go ahead and use um, a switch action or a switch condition inside an apply to each. And if this is a new time that you're seeing, you know, this is the first time that you're seeing it, this is great because you'll learn this technique as well. So how I'm going to go ahead and use the switch method inside an apply to all. So here we go. I'm going to come in now and inside my apply to all, I'm going to put a new step. And in my new step, I'm going to now create a uh, variable. So in the variable, I'm going to now apply the value to the variable. So in the set um, set value, sorry, set variable, I'm going to go and get my var confidence. And in the var confidence, I'm going to go ahead and add the sentiment. So in the set variable for the bar's confidence, I'm going to go and grab the first one, which is the sentiment. The moment I do that, it automatically goes and puts it into the apply to each. And in the apply to each, it went and put in the documents, which is great because I wanted to do that. And therefore, I let I, I kind of intentionally skipped that step and I went ahead and just put the value to the set variable because I already knew I was going to do this. So kind of follow along with me. It's not important. It's not that you, you know, um, do a copycat of what I'm doing. Follow the steps, like follow the steps how I'm doing because you might miss this one, which is Daniel just went into the set variable and it automatically put that into an apply to each. You should not create an apply to each first because that can really get things a little confusing. Cool. So let me just rename this one to set and I'm going to call this as the var confidence variable. So I set it, all right, because in the previous one I was initializing it. This one I eventually went ahead and set it. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and add a switch function. So I go in out of control. In the control, I grab the switch. And in the switch, we are going to now use the sentiment, which is the first one. I go and grab that sentiment. And then now we're going to have three different cases. And you pretty much already guessed it. It's the positive, negative, and neutral. So what I can do is I can actually go and now rename these ones. So this is going to be the um, case and I'll end that with positive. Here, I'm going to go ahead and add another one. Actually not here. I'll go and click on this one, the plus button for another case. And this is going to be the case negative. And then I'll leave the default as is. Okay, so the default, we'll just leave that as is. In the case for the first one, it's going to be positive. So you are actually going to put in some text over here, but it's very important how you look at the case sensitivity of the text. Now for the case, which is, um, I said position Daniel, it is case positive equals, you want to type in just positive. Don't put an uppercase P, leave it all lowercase. If you put an uppercase P, it will actually give you an error. All right. So kind of keep that in mind. And over here in that one, I'll go ahead and I'll put in the variable and I'll set the value of the bar confidence score. So I grab that and I come in and I'll go ahead and do a set variable. Set variable is going to be for the variable confidence score or bar confidence score. Click on that and I'll go ahead and grab the positive. So I scroll down, scroll down, sensitive, 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 right there, right there, right there. And I want to get the first positive. So what you can also do is you can type that in and always grab the first one because the first one is the overall score or the confidence score. The second one goes for each and every sentences. This is a very important point that you need to understand. 
is that there are different positives over there, positive at each and every sentence level, and then positive for the entire score. And if you just want to realize what's the real difference between them, I'll show you this example. So check this out, right? First one, I click on positive, works really well. Second one, there are multiple positives. Because remember in the example we just did, there were three sentences. So moment I click on that, it goes into its own apply to each, which makes perfect sense because the apply to each always does with more than one item. And the second positive was for three sentences. So it is Power Automate truly is a very smart system, too smart that it'll confuse you sometimes. So that's why I keep in mind and remember what I said, the first is that always go with the first one. Okay, so I'm gonna go back now and I'll initially set up our variable again. Variable, I'll go and do a variable right here and I'll go and now set the value of the variable and we are going to go and get the var confidence score and the first one, it's the first positive that you wanna catch up, okay? It's the first one. So very important lesson that you've learned, really very important lesson, cool. Next, now in this equals, I wanna go and get negative. Same thing, it is a text that I'm typing in, but make it all lowercase. And then after that, I'll go ahead and put in the same variable, which is right here, right there, click on that, get the set variable, again, confidence, score, and here you can click on the value, I'll just search for negative, grab the first one, and then finally for this one, I don't need to put in any value, because if one is positive, one is negative, the other one will be neutral. So that's what I'll do. I'll come to variable, and in my variable, I'll search for, click on variables, set variable, confidence, score, and here I will just type in, uh, actually I don't need to type in anything, I'll just go ahead and get the neutral as the first neutral. I'll go ahead and save it. And there you go, we've actually got a good chunk of it already done. And just a quick recap, this is the section where you wanna get that overall confidence score, whether this is a positive or a neutral or a negative, you wanna go and grab that. And 99% of the time, this is enough for you because you can get now the confidence score and you can present it, you can save it wherever you want. If it's in a SharePoint list, Dataverse table, SQL table, Excel spreadsheet too, if you wanna save it over there. But you've got all your analytics done. Your AI has done all the massaging of the data. You got the analytics, you got the sentiment score, and you can go and now you know, put all the data. But if, if for whatever reason you wanna go ahead and get a much more breakdown of each and every sentences, and you wanna see, okay, what was the maximum one? Or what was the minimum one? Like, well, I wanna see what the higher score was. I wanna see what the minimum score was. Then you gotta go ahead and do another technique. And I'll show you what that other technique is. So while we are in this flow itself, I'll go ahead and create a parallel branch and I'll create that branch and it'll be right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now go and set another value. So I'll come in and I'll go and set a value here. And in that value, I'm going to go ahead and set the value to the var sentiment. Now the value for the var sentiment is, an, it's an array type variable. So if you come over here on the top and the var sentiment, it's an array type variable. So moment I come now and set its value, it is automatically going to go and do an apply to each. So watch this, I come in now and I go ahead and grab the var sentiment and in the var sentiment, as I search down and I'll look for sentiments, I'm sorry, it's the sentences. Cause remember I said, we're going to go and grab the information of each and every sentences. So it's, it's not the sentiment, it's the sentences. So check this out, okay? In, in here, when I go and now search for sentences, it will actually go ahead and do a loop in here. It basically goes ahead and puts in inside the documents and inside the documents it went and put that into sentences. But what I wanna do is I wanna take it a step further is I want to go ahead and get the positiveness or the negativeness, in this case I'll focus on the positive, the positiveness on each and every sentence. So to take it to the next level, delete that, come back over here and search for positive and this time it's going to be the second one. Yes, it's the second one. Remember, in the first scenario, we wanted the overall score. I selected the first one. In this case, I want to get it for each and every sentence, which is why I'm intentionally clicking the second one. And it's going to go ahead and apply another apply to each, which is fine. This is exactly how we've decided. So what it is, is it's basically now taking the main document, for main document, each and every sentences, and then each and every sentences, its value. Now you can leave this current item as is, because that's what it's doing. It's going and putting the current item if you're not feeling comfortable, you can actually go ahead and delete that and intentionally just go ahead and search for sentences. 
go ahead and grab and put that over there and it'll work just fine as well. What happens now is we've got a lot of data coming in. We will have for each and every sentences, I've got its own positive coming in. How do I go ahead and save that information? Ah, for that, we go ahead and use that array that we have. So that's what it's basically doing. For all the positives, it will go ahead and save it in that sentiment array variable. But then Daniel, how do I go ahead and get its you know, overall highest confidence or overall highest positiveness or the minimum positiveness? How, how do I go ahead and do that? Well, there's a very simple and easy way to go and do that because Power Automate already comes with this uh, expression for max and min, and it already does that. And in fact, it will take the entire array for you and it'll give you the max score. Or it'll take the entire array for you, it'll give you the minimum score. It is literally that simple. So let me show you how to go and do that. Now, the important thing is which step do you wanna do it? You gotta skip this one, you gotta even skip that one, come actually towards the end. And in the end, I'm going to now go ahead and just drop a compose so you can see that. So I'll go to the compose and in here, I am going to go ahead and get the max. So click on that, the input over here, click on expression, search for max. I got it, opens it up, open up the open, open up the open brackets, close it. In fact, I you know, always go one out, one back in, come back in. And here is where you go ahead and put in the bar sentiment. That's what it is, the bar sentiment and this will give you the max. So let me just go ahead and now give it a name so we know what this is. This is the compose max sentiment. Come over here, add an action, and then this one, I will go as it add another compose. So I'll do the compose, drop that. Inside the, it's just the compose. Inside this one, I am going to now get the min. So come here, I'll search for min, M-I-N, got it. Open up the brackets. Close the brackets, awesome, come back in. In here, I'll go ahead and get the var sentiment. And next, I'll come in and I'll go ahead and name this one into min sentiment. And there we go, we are pretty much done. So we've gone through quite a few scenarios. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and I'll run an example and you'll see actually what happens. So I'll go ahead and actually do a manual one. I'll run it. And let's try to replicate something before, okay? So I'll say, um, don't miss the hashtag R and the underscore show. They are two awesome MVPs. Hope to see you there. I'll put an exclamation mark. All right, let's go run. Now it's running, everything is gonna happen. In fact, it'll all show us run over here and we'll see the different breakdowns that's happening. Awesome, so the flow ran successfully, and we can just go and take a look. Everything looks good over here. So let's focus on the two different pieces, all right? One was to go ahead and just get the overall score. So in the overall score, it is to make sure which one is it. Is it a positive, is it a negative, what is it? And as you can see, it was just a neutral. Basically, the neutral was the highest one. So it came back and said that, yep, it was a neutral. That's why the neutral one was checked and it came back with a 0.2. So the overall confidence score of this one was very neutral. But now if I go ahead and now expand on this section over here, I am able to go ahead and get the entire breakdown of the 0.12 or 0.12, then there was also the full one confidence score, and then it also went and grabbed the full one. And I can go and see how that breakdown happened, because if I go down over here to the minimum statement, the minimum score was 0.12, which is what the other one picked up over here. And then the max score was one, which is what it picked up. So I just did a full example to you showing how you can just get an overall confidence score, or you can go a full breakdown of how everything works. So it's kind of up to you how you want to take this, whether you want to break it down and you know get all of them, which is all three sections which I did for that one full sentences, three sentences, I was able to break down and get the min and the max, or you can just get an overall confidence score as well. It's completely up to you how you want to break down. What you would do is that if you want to just get an overall confidence score, then you can basically just stop right here in the first section that I did. You did the apply to each, I mean, you know, internet got the confidence score, you did the switch, you are golden. But if you want to get an overall high or min, then that's the way you go ahead and get this breakdown, which I did over here. That, you know, go ahead and put then apply to each, inside the apply to each, and then you can get for each and every sentences. Remember, I had three sentences, which is why in the in, inner apply to each, it went three different times and gave us all the, scro all the scores over there. Wasn't that awesome? I just walked you through both the scenarios, whether you want to get an overall confidence score 
or you can get the positive, negative or neutral of each and every sentence level. The new sentiment analysis action actually gives you that much of a detailed information and it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. So take a look at the flow once again and just pick and choose what you want. If you want to go ahead and get the each sentence level, then build that array. But if you just want the overall confidence score, then that's fine, just skip that piece. So hopefully this was helpful and as always, keep power automating. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.